Uh, you're not answering my question. No, sir, I <laughs> am. I am answering okay. it as any person who can read the original Is language the text knows. also that beyond? Yes or no? If purgatory exists, it doesn't. That this clip of ventilacion asking the same thing over and over and over again is just going to be playing on a jumbotron on loop. It says here, God exalted Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ is God, or the eternal Son of God, is there a need for exaltation? Yes you, or no? You, uh, you reject the incarnation, and okay. therefore you say I'm not answering your question. I just believe all the Bible. I'm sorry. Call an ambulance, okay? Ventilacion just got, he just got stabbed. Welcome back to a brand new video here at Wise Disciple. My name is Nate. Thank you so much for watching. The goal of this ministry is to help you become the effective Christian that you were meant to be. And so, as a former debate teacher myself, I look at theology and apologetics debates and call balls and strikes when I see them. Today's video was requested years ago. I'm talking like back in 2020, I think. For some reason, I never got around to it, but now I finally am. This is James White versus Joe Ventilacion on the Trinity debate. Uh, the proposition for the debate was pretty solid. You know, it was very much more in line with a formal style of debate. It reads, the Bible teaches that within the one being that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dr. White takes the aff on this proposition and ventilation takes the neg. As you know, cross-examination is where the magic happens, where you can quickly shine or suck badly in real time. That's why I love to take a look at that. So let's go there right now. How would I address you, uh, Dr. White? Whether That's fine. Okay. Dr. White, uh, the first verse you used was John 17, 3. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Um, in John 17, 3, who's the one speaking at that verse? Jesus addressing the Father. Okay. He was addressing the Father. Yes. Now, when he addressed the Father, what did Hot he mic. say to the Father concerning God? He addressed the, him as the only true God. The what? The only true God. Okay. So, if the one that is talking... To the Father is saying, you are the only true God. Would, how would you understand the word only? Could there be another God? So you're going to have to keep track because uh, it sounds like they're just boom, 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 jumping right into Scripture. I have my uh, logo software loaded up and ready to go. By the way, somebody asked me, I don't know if it was an email recently or something like that. Nate, what app are you using when you read the Scripture in the videos on YouTube? I'm using Logos. I have my Logos up. Uh, I, I encourage you, if you're watching, to get your Bibles open or whatever it is that you use and follow along, because this is probably going to go pretty quick. No, I'm a monotheist, sir. I don't assume Unitarianism. I, I will repeat the question. He said, you are the only. When he said, you are the only, is he referring to himself or no. to the Father? No, he's referring to the Father, obviously. He was referring to the Father. Yeah. For reference, uh, this is John 17, 3, and this is eternal life. This is Jesus talking to the Father, that they know you, the only true God. So Ventilacion is questioning Dr. White about this phrase right here. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Let's see what happens. Do you believe what Christ said, that the Father yes. is the only true God? You believe that? I certainly do, because I'm a monotheist. I've said that from the start. Oh, I just don't assume okay. Unitarianism, sir. So, did Jesus say... That they will believe you and me as the only true God? Did he say that? No, they said to have eternal life. They have eternal life in only knowing the Father and the Son. So yes. to Jesus, the only true God is the Father. There's only one God, sir, yeah. yes. To Jesus, yes. in John 17. Yeah, you're, argue, you're arguing a point that, that, that is not in dispute. You do not tell me what I had to uh, to a question there, Dr. Uh, Dr. Wright, please. I'm repeating my question. Jesus said the Father is the only true God. You believe that? Yes, I do. So to Jesus, the Father is the only true God. Yes. How do you understand the word only? Could there be another one? No, I, I understand it in light of what Jesus goes on to say when he talks about the time and eternity when he was glorious in the presence of the Father. And since there's only one glory of Yahweh, then Jesus would identify That's himself not as my Yahweh. Question. Was he not? I will repeat again, Mr. Wright. Okay. I can't answer a question by looking at the verse after this. Well, you can do that, but that will be it's, a, it's, There's only one your sentence in between, already. sir. There's only one sentence in between. Don't, don't you think you should allow at least three sentences in the context? That's not the point. The point is... No, I think geez. it is the point. Okay. So I'm reminded of the rules of debate uh, right off the bat here. And one of them is don't lose your cool. <laughs> Don't become overly emotional, remain calm, be forceful, but with regard to your argumentation. Ventilacion, it seems to me, is walking the line between being a bombast and becoming emotional. In other words, much of his yelling is probably due to his 
presentation style that he's probably crafted over time. So if you went to his church on a Sunday morning and he was standing at the pulpit, this is probably how he would talk. But it's very easy for emotions to get all mixed into this. And ventilation has to be careful. Don't you tell me what to, you know, I'm saying Mr. White, right? On the other hand, Dr. White needs to watch it because this is ventilation's cross-examination time, which means Dr. White should not be asking questions right now, which he is. He just needs to be answering questions. You, you, you already used that, okay? You used John 17, 5, but I'm using John 17, 3. Jesus said, I believe Father, both of them. I yeah. believe 3 and 5. You, you have did, to put you them did. together. Okay. I, and I thank you that you started with John 17, 3. Here's the next question based on your book. You said that the Greek word theon, can you please put it on the screen, please? The word theon is the accusative form or singular form of theos. Am I right? Yes. Okay. I don't see anything on the screen, but... All right. But I, I could probably put that later on. Okay. Now, in your book, page 52, you said that the word theon, the word theon, in, describes... In what text are you talking about, sir? Your book. I know. What text in the Bible? I'm asking about your book. Your I know, book. but I'm quoting from the Bible. Where? What text in the Bible are we talking about? John 17, 3. That's why we are here in John 17, 3. You forgot your, your, what you have written? No. Okay. Um, All right. But... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, here's the next. He's sassy. I'll bet he's a riot at parties. Question. All right. You said in... in oh, wait, uh, okay. So the word theon. Yeah, theon. Manon, alethanon, theon. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. You said in page 52 that the word theon describes the almighty God. Is that right? Yes. Describes the almighty God. It describes the Yahweh also, correct? It describes what? The Yahweh. The Yahweh. You mean Yahweh? Yahweh. Yahweh. Yeah. So yes. Home. Okay. You also say that the word theon is a description of the creator of all things. Is, it, is that right? <laughs> right. That's, okay. why, that's why it's used of Jesus. Who's so, I mean, we, we have to keep track. Okay, so now uh, I think we're in uh, John 1.1. 1, 1. So again, if you have your Bibles open, you have your uh, apps open, track this. They're, they're bopping around quite a bit. In John, in John chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse 1, you, do you see the word theon? Yes. Introduced by the article theon. Uh, yes. Yes. Where is that in John 1.1? 1, 1? Is it the second clause? Yes, Kaihalaga same pras ton theon. Yes, ton theon. Mm -hmm. So you have the ton theon in John 1 1, and you said that the theon describes the Almighty God. Specific, All right. Specifically, I said that this is referring to the Father. Correct. Okay, so the Almighty God, the theon in John 1 1, is referring to the Father. In that context, yes. In that context, okay. It's not because it's an accusative. Accusative is irrelevant. Well, the. Ventilation is comparing two texts, two uses of the word God in the text. The first is in John 17, 3. So again, this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And the second one is in John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What it appears Ventilacion is doing is he's trying to argue that Jesus is speaking to the only God in John 17, so the only true God, which must mean that Jesus is not God. Dr. White is appealing to the next couple of verses after verse 3, so, you know, verse 5 there, which is exactly what he should do. He should be assessing a proof text with other texts and arguing for the interpretation that best fits all the texts on this specific issue. The point here is that you said it is an accusative. Yeah. Yes, uh, on page, on page no, uh, 1 and 10, I believe. You right, so the accusative refers to the way that certain nouns are like the direct object of a verb. God, this is stretching me back to my English days. I'm not sure why this is important to ventilation, but again, the accusative refers to the way a noun is being used in a sentence. In, in this case, the noun is God. Let's see where this is going. It, it, it is an accusative. The tontion is referring to the almighty God. In that context, okay. but as I so said, in, in John 1, accus 1, like, sir, accu okay. let me just make sure I answer your question. The accusative is irrelevant. That's just how it's functioning in this particular case. I did not case. ask about the accusative. You were the one who said that the theon is an accusative. My question there is on the theon. You said that theon is referring to the Almighty God in John 1.1. 1, 1. To the Father. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm not, that's not my question. My question is, you said that theon refers to the Almighty God. I right? said the Father, sir. Okay. Now, so in, yeah. so in John 1.1, 1, 1, in John 1.1, 1, 1, on the second clause, where you have the Theon, is the Theon there the Almighty God? It's the Father, yes. Sir. Okay, so in John 1.1, 1, 1, the Almighty God is the Father. I said once again, <laughs> you, can, you can keep repeating yourself all, all right. you want. Everybody 
This broken record style of questioning is getting old. Uh, I'm not sure what the strategy. I mean, usually you sometimes use the broken record. So in other words, you repeat a question when you believe that your opponent is not answering a question. You usually do that, though, like once, twice, you know, just so the judge recognizes the unanswered question. But to keep doing it over and over and over again, the way that Ventilacion is doing it, it quickly becomes an annoyance and it just eats up way too much time. Remember, cross-examination only has a limited amount of time. Like, I think they have 10 minutes here. So this isn't the best thing that Ventilacion could be doing right at this very moment. But here knows so the, that what I said in my consistent... So the logos, excuse me, excuse okay. me. You, you do need to allow me to answer your questions. Okay. I know you're on a roll here, yes, but I you need to let roll. me answer your questions. Definitely. Uh -huh. If anyone reads my book, they will know that what I said is the first clause says that the Logos is eternal. The second clause says that the Logos is in eternal relationship with the Father. I read and it. the third clause says that the Logos is as to his nature deity. That's why I'm asking, I'm questioning you on the position uh, of John 1 1 B. You said that the Logos is not the Theon. And the Theon, you said, is theon. the Theon. In yes. relationship with, yes. Correct. Just yeah, as I, you have in John 17 5. Exactly. That's what he said. The, in John 17, uh, in John 1, 1, you said that the Theon is the Almighty God. I said it was the Father, so please, please stop misrepresenting me. No, I'm not representing you. That is what you wrote in page 52, that the Theon is the Almighty God. And, and, you're, and you're very confused about my presentation because you you're trying to read it. Thank you for telling me I'm it. confused. Yes, I, because you're trying to read it as <laughs> if I'm a Unitarian, no, and no, no, no. I'm not as I've tried. I think what's happening, it's hard because Ventilacion is not a native English speaker. Uh, also, we don't have Dr. White's book on the screen for reference. But I think what Ventilacion is trying to do is say, look, Dr. White is saying that Jesus is not the Almighty God because of Je John 17, 3. And this, therefore, contradicts his position in the debate tonight because uh, Dr. White's position is that Jesus is God. Dr. White is saying, no, I'm saying that Jesus is not the Father, which is the classic Trinitarian position. There are a lot more areas to press Dr. White on. Ventilacion just needs to move on. Tried to tell everybody very from nice, the beginning. Very nice uh, answer, Mr. White, but you do not answer. I said, in John 1, 1 B, you said that the Theon is the Almighty God. It says the Father, yes. It is the Father. So the Father is the Almighty God, correct? Except that the very next clause okay. identifies Jesus as Theos. No. So I allow uh, everything to speak, okay. not just little words. So, so the Logos is not the Theon. I'm sorry? Is the Logos also the Theon? Not the individual, no. The That's Logos not. is okay. Thai Theos, were, ain't Ha Logos. Thank you, thank you. So the Logos is not the Theon. Not in Yes not, or no? No, not in, not in the second, so, second so clause. The, the Logos is not the Almighty God. So you, you, are, you are asking me to prove no, I'm exactly asking, what I said in my book. I'm not asking you to prove. And I'm asking you so Look, you can answer the question. No, no, sir. You don't want me to answer the question. You have a point that you're trying to force onto the text. And you are I'm wrong about the text. And here's why it's, you're wrong. Because the people in this audience recognize, sir, that you cannot take the Bible and cut it up into little phrases and forget what the next phrase is. The next phrase after kai halaga saying proston theon is what, sir? I think I'm it is kai theos ain halaga. Right. So, you know, again, for reference, hopefully your Bibles are open. <laughs> what Ventilacion is focused on is, is this phrase right here, and the word was with God. And what Dr. White has just reminded Ventilacion is, yeah, but what does this say? And the word was God. How do you focus on this to the detriment or the rejection of the last part of that statement? Dr. White is good to point this out. You're satisfied going, my yes, answer. Okay, I'm good. going back. I'm going back to John 1.1b. 1, 1 you said that the theon is Yahweh, correct? The Father. No. There's only one God, okay. so the Father is Yahweh, the so, Son is Yahweh, the so Spirit is Yahweh. So the Logos is not the Theon. Am I right? The Logos is not the Father. That's correct. No, no, no. The I Logos see. is Theos. The Logos is not the Theon. But the Logos is Theos. I'm not asking that question. The Logos is not is the, the Father. Is the Logos also the Theon? He's not the Father, sir. They He's are differentiated. I, you're not answering my question. No, sir. I <laughs> am. I am answering okay. it as any person who can read the original is language the text knows. Is the Logos also the Theon? Yes or no? The Logos is just, it says, pros not, Tan not Theon. The He's the in the presence of Tan Theon. So that's why it's the Father, okay. not the All Spirit right. or anyone All else. All right, okay. Now we go to John 17, 3. Do you see I the word? we were just there. No, we were in John 1, 1. No. You're confused. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. <laughs> we were there before. Let's go back. Uh, let's go back to John 1, uh, John 17, 3. Do you see the word Theon in John 17, 3? Uh-huh. You see the ton monon alatenon theon. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you translate the ton monon alatenon theon? 
gods. It's, it's the only true God, sir, only as true I said God. in my opening. Yeah. Do you still believe that the Tion is referring to the Almighty God? To the Father, yes. Yes. So in John 17, So John's very consistent. Yes, he is very consistent. Okay. Right, Differentiating right, okay. between the Father so, and the Son. Yes. So in John 17, 3, Dr. White, the Tion is the Almighty God, right? The Father. The Father. So the Father is the Almighty God. See, you keep assuming uh, Unitarianism by saying... I do honestly believe that if purgatory exists, it doesn't. That this clip of ventilacion asking the same thing over and over and over again is just going to be playing on a jumbotron on loop. Almighty God. Don't tell me and that. John, I'm John, asking sir, you a question. Sir. No, you're not answering. You're not asking me a question. You don't want to know what I believe. What I believe is the Almighty God is shared. The, his being is shared by three persons, times. which is which. Okay. <laughs> Let's thank them for this cross examination. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank God for time limits, right? Let's also clap our hands for surviving that segment. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm tempted to start up the famous R and raw drinking game for most repeated question. You, you very <laughs> Actually, somebody can check me on that. Who asked the same question more times? Was it R and raw when he debated inspiring philosophy, or was it this guy? <laughs> Ventilation yes. in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. Okay. It says, Prostaton we on to the sun. Okay, okay. So again, you're going to have to keep track of these passages because they're going pretty quick. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 says this, But of the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom of the sun and then he calls the sun god but then it gets more interesting than that watch this verse 9 you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god your god has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions so wait a sec the sun is god and god is god so here we have the components of the trinity i take it dr white wants to press his opponent on how the scripture can call jesus the sun and god and then differentiate god the son and god the father at the same time and who is the son in this text the son of course is the lord jesus christ made lord by god and then when verse 10 has, is introduced with the simple term chi that continues citation regards the son does it not to me uh, verse 10 is referring to the god and in verse 5 and in verse 1 because in verse 1 it says there is god who at sundry times in a diverse manners spoke to us in time fast time past to the fathers to the prophets and in these last days spoken to his son so there's the word god there in john i mean in hebrews 1 and 1 and in hebrews chapter 1 verse 6 that when god brought the firstborn into the earth he said let all the angels of god worship him. so you're saying that verses 10 through 12 are not about the son it's not about the son the verse 10 is not about the son it is about the god who gave his son and the his spokesperson. Can you demonstrate that the term? Okay, the whole passage, starting in verse 8, uh, says this. Of the Son, he says. Okay, well, who is he? God the Father. Which means that the rest of these verses, you know, the rest of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, sort of starts to uh, shift there a little bit. All of this is connected to what God the Father says about the Son. Verse 10 says this. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Wait a second. Ventilacion was just arguing that John 1.1 1, 1 is about God. The description uh, in John 1.1 1, 1 of the Logos, the activity of the Logos, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. Isn't this about Jesus? Not. It's not the Father, though, right? But yet here, Ventilacion wants to say, no, 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 wait a second. The focus has shifted, and now we're talking about the Father in verse 10. Even though the Word in John 1.1 1, 1 created all things, no, 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 this is actually about the Father. If Dr. White is a good debater, which we already know he is, he's going to make Ventilacion exegete the text to support this claim. The term chi there is disjunctive and not conjunctive. From well, the text, sir. I'm not, I'm not particular of the disjunctive or the con... What did you say? Conjunctive? Conjunctive or disjunctive? Okay. Okay. You, you are saying that it is disjunctive, that it is disconnecting no, I, the, I'm not the saying person that. of address. Can I you prove that say, from the text, sir? I did not say, sir, that it's either a conjunctive or subjunctive. I didn't say what subjunctive. I'm, what I'm saying is, the Lord here in verse 10 is referring to verse 1 and to verse 6 but can you prove that from the text sir the text actually has an introduction to one citation followed by an introduction to a second they're both about the same person you need to show, show us from the text I, why, why you're said. disjuncting them that's why he said in the text in the text of hebrews yes okay 
not only in, in verses 8 down to 9, you have to study the context from verse 1 down to verse 10, so you would see that there are two beings that are being talked about. Okay, so, God so, and his son. Okay, so then verse 13 then goes back to the son then. To which of the angels he ever said, sit at my right hand? Because that's Psalm 110, which you just quoted. So, what, so you what, have what Psalm you... 110 and verse 13 of the son, and you have the son before that, but you're just simply going to say, oh, verses 10 through 12 about somebody else, right? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Call a doctor. Call an ambulance. Okay? Ventilacion just got... He just got stabbed. He's bleeding, and he doesn't even know it. Very well done by Dr. White. I mean, that's, that's how you do it. That's, that's it. You said about the verse 13, but the which of the angels, has he ever said, sit at my right hand? The one that is sitting at the right hand of God is Jesus. Right. Okay? So you have the son in verse 13, you have the son in verse 9, but you're saying verses 10, 11, 12, which are about Jehovah, are not about the son, even though you can't give us anything I, uh, from the text I, I to have demonstrate a, I have that. a problem with a Jehovah. I'm not against the Jehovah's Witnesses per se. Okay, Yahweh. But, okay. Or, or what did he say, Lord? No, the Yahweh is the proper term. So even though the text very clearly is consistent all the way through, you're just simply going to dismiss verses uh, 10, 11, not, 12 uh, I, as what, being about the okay, Father and not about the Son. Here's my answer. Hebrews 1 and 8 is connected with Hebrews 1 9. Am I right? Yep. Okay. So in verse 9, it says here, You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, the God of the Son, your God, has anointed you. And then in verse 13, that God who anointed the Son no, no, no. allowed him to. Uh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Here, this is what Ventilation is doing. Hey, look at verse 8 here, guys. Look at verse 9 here. Now skip all the way down to verse 13. Don't look at 10 through 12. Don't do that. No, 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 Ventilation. That's not exegesis. You're Frankensteining the text to say what you want it to say. You have to take it all. You have to watch the flow. You can't skip over the verses like that. That's not. It's not how it's done. Sit at his right hand. So you're talking of two beings here. But you didn't prove Hebrews that from the text. Or the word, I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. In John is, chapter 12. John chapter right. 12. When Jesus... Right. So, okay. okay. Notice the difference between white and ventilacion. Ventilacion in the last cross segment there spent like 9,000 hours asking the same question in his segment. He did so because he perceived that Dr. White was not answering his question. Dr. White just now perceives that ventilacion is not answering his question, but he knows, like a good debater, that he's already sufficiently asked the question. Ventilacion is not given a sufficient answer. That's all he has to do, because the judges are going to see it for themselves, and so he moves on. That's what you're supposed to do. White is killing it right now. Uh, when John says, these things Isaiah said because he saw his glory, whose glory did uh, Isaiah see? That's not saying a verse. I'm sorry? That's not saying there. John chapter 12, verse yeah. 41, these things Isaiah... Okay, now we're in John chapter 12, guys. So you have to, again, keep track of these things. John chapter 12, uh, talking about Isaiah, verse 41. Isaiah said these things about Jesus uh, because he saw his glory and spoke of him. We got to keep track. Isaiah said because yeah, he saw his glory. Who is the him? That's why I said, I did not see in that verse his glory if it is referring to God or to Jesus. I did not see that because I don't see the word God. I don't see the word Father. I don't see the word Son. So when it says, well, who is he speaks, talking about? It says he spoke speaks, concerning him. Who's the him? The him that is Jesus Christ. And the second part. Only in and the second spoke, part? And spoke concerning him. Oh, wait a minute. So, so, so you're telling me that Isaiah saw his glory. You don't know who that his is. Well, that's not true. I didn't but, say I don't but know. Two, but wait a minute. But, okay. two, but wait a minute. Three words later, the very same Altu appears, and now it's somebody else? See, here's my answer, okay? I said, we are not sure of the his there is either referring to God or to the Son. What I know is that it says His glory. Now, if it is your position that it is referring to Jesus, all right, so if Jesus was the one that was seen, then it contradicts John 1 verse 18, that no one has seen God at any time. Except in John chapter 1 verse 18, you, 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 you put it up on the screen, but it didn't mention anything about it. John did. 18, what, is, what does John 1 18 say about the Son? Okay, uh, you're asking let's me go, that, Let's go ahead and, you're, and turn you're, to that. You're asking me that we'll, question? We'll, we'll go back to John 12, but John no, chapter no, 1 they, verse 18. The so, so, yeah, so now we're John chapter 1 verse 18. But look, John 12 referencing Isaiah is a great passage. It is absolutely about Jesus and Jesus' glory. Uh, they're just going too fast, guys, you know? So, again, you got to have your Bibles open. Uh, and, I, and I can't turn to every single 
verse. I'm going to try to help, okay? Let's just go real quick. John 1 verse 18. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Ventilacion just said, wait, wait, wait. John 1 18 teaches that no one has seen God's glory. Look at it. Is that what John 1 18 teaches? Something has been made known, right? But who is that? Let's see what happens next. Best reading is, okay, no you're... one has seen God in any time. Monogenes Theos, your, the your, one. I'm, your I'm, duty I'm, is to ask a question. Don't... I am asking you a question, okay. sir. If you want, oh. if you want to interrupt me, I'll be able to finish. Okay. Jesus is described as Monogenes Theos in John 1 18. Okay. That is in a variant that you were saying in your book. Okay. Did, did, did you? Do you agree that it is a variant? Yes, text? I do. Okay, so can you explain to me what is a variant later on? What is a variant text compared it to? It is the reading. It is the reading. The two earliest papyri, P66, P75, and the I two know. earliest unsealed Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. But it is so not a. If that's the reading, sir, if you want to dispute the reading, that we can do the text. I criticism. am disputing the reading. So you, so you do not believe that it's not I do not believe the monogamy stay us there. You do not believe it. I, I believe so the earliest manuscripts of the New Testament you reject. Yes, regularly, the consistently, one? in all of your reading. No, I really doubt you do. When, okay. When you are a textual scholar, what do you do? Do you just base on one or two or two textual witnesses, or you, no, you don't. consider all the two? The two, Very good. The two okay. earliest. When you have the two earliest manuscripts of it John does say not mean, Theos. it doesn't mean because it is okay. earlier. It okay. Is so you're going to. No, okay, that's fine. No. Let me ask. You. So I hope that you're keeping track of this. The point that Dr. White is making is <clears throat> Jesus is called the only God who is at the Father's side. Look at it. The only God, right? So even though no one has ever seen God, it is this person, the only God at the Father's side, who God has made known. And Ventilacion just said, I don't think that phrase, the only God, is biblical. It comes from variant text that should be rejected as scripture. Okay, but what's the basis for the rejection? Is it according to the standards we use to accept certain texts of scripture, or is it because it just contradicts your theology? You know, let me ask you another question. Okay. You said that I began with John 17, 3. I actually didn't. Did. I, said, I said if you use John 17, 3, it proves you don't understand the doctrine of the Trinity. Oops. But since we went there, okay. uh, I'd like to ask you about the sentence after uh, what uh, you've been looking at. Could you please explain to me, now glorify me, Father. Who is the me? That's Jesus. Okay. Uh, does God glorify anyone but himself? That's what Jesus said. Glorify me. He's okay. asking. And he's praying. He says, para se auto, by your side. So Jesus is glorified at the same level as the Father? No, he doesn't say that. Oh, so no. para se auto is he a different say level. That. Okay. Okay. The okay. What was the glory which I had by your side before? Okay, you got to keep track, guys. You got to keep track of this. We're back to John 17 now, verse 5, Jesus says, And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. Okay, for your reference, this is what they're talking about. Before the world oh, was. How that, was the Son in that, possession of the glory of that, God before the world came into existence? That would entail a long explanation, Dr. White. Well, I'm, they, I'm, I, I hope you would you've change got, your You've question. got a little time to get to it. Yeah, I do. Okay, because, because you said, what was the glory? Yes. Well, there's a lot of things that Apostle Paul mentioned about. Excuse me, that's not Apostle Paul. We're in John 17, 5. No, I, I, that's what he said. It's not there. You're it's, asking it's not me John about. Seven, so you can't answer this in John 17, 5? You're asking me about the glory that is being mentioned in John 17, 5. So I said, you're asking me about the glory? Fine, I have the answers, but not in John 17, 5, because that's that Seder. What kind of glory is that? It doesn't? So it what, doesn't, what, then what does... Wait, wait, wait. wait. It, it doesn't say what kind of glory that Jesus had in John 17, 5. And now, Father, glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. That doesn't uh, provide some kind of a descriptor of the type of glory that Jesus had. That's an interesting claim. What does pra tu ton kosmon ainai mean? To you. What? What does it mean to you, Christ? No, I'm asking you the questions. Okay. What does pra Christ, tu ton kosmon Christ, ainai mean? Christ had a glory... Before, okay, as what? an individual, as an individual, did Christ did Christ as, existed before his birth in eternity in the presence no, of the Father? No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, he didn't. Okay. I, 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 I said, if you would allow me, I could read to you the explanation. If you want, because it would kill a lot of your times. Then Colossians one fifteen down yes. to seventeen, which of course you already know. Oh, I, I know it very well. Okay, that swings. That means if you know them very well, well, it says there that Christ, God created all things 
before Christ. He and according through to him, and and yeah, it's exactly right. It's the exact same terminology he uses of the Father in First Corinthians one. But uh, this is not going well <laughs> for Fitzgerald. Doctor White is just batting him around like a little white bunny rabbit in his big white bare hands. <laughs> Jesus had glory with the Father before the world existed. That's John seventeen five. But Jesus didn't exist to have that glory. Is that what Ventilacion is trying to <laughs> claim here? So, so he had the glory, but he didn't actually have it. Like I'm, that doesn't quite make sense. Okay, yeah, eight, but what's, okay. the point is, Jesus says, which I had, icon. Okay. I had with you. Correct. I don't have to dispute that that he had a glory before, but it doesn't mean that because he had a glory, he is already existing. Uh, to, to tell you that. If you had a glory that you are not yet existing, probably this is the first time you will encounter this verse. If I said, if I said that I really enjoyed the quesadilla we had for lunch, wouldn't that mean I was there to eat the quesadilla? I don't know. Is that if you? <laughs> I mean, we didn't get to do that, but, but that would seem to be the case. But the it? question here is, is the glory? And I told you that if you had a glory, it doesn't mean that you are existing. Would you like me to read the verse? Please. Okay. Listen now. This is. Romans 8, 29. Come on, Dan. Yeah. Oh, is it's done. Well, wait, 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 wait. We have to see what he's going to say, though, right? Let, let's, Romans 8, 29, let's find out, right? For those whom he foreknew, whom God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Okay, how, how does this prove that Jesus did not exist before the foundation of the world? How does this help us to interpret Jesus' own words in John 17? I, I don't see it. As a matter of fact, which is a simpler explanation that God predestined those whom he foreknew or new into his son's image, who was existing with the father already, or, I mean, because that's clearly what Jesus said in John 17, 5, or is the simpler explanation uh, that God predestined those whom he foreknew to conform into his son's image before the son even existed. So, so it's it's based on what the son's image would have been or would be once he came into existence later. I mean, boy, that's a, that's a really strange interpretation of the text. And I don't know, he also wanted to go to Colossians 1. So I don't know how Colossians 1 is going to help him either. I, this was, this was kind of strange. If you believe in what God is doing here at this channel, I want you to join me. Wise Disciple is now live on Patreon accepting memberships. So go ahead and uh, go over to Patreon and, and look up uh, Wise Disciple here. What I'm praying for is that Wise Disciple becomes a community where we can start making a difference in our homes, in our churches and neighborhoods for the kingdom of God. We are in the beginning. We're gonna start out like a mustard seed. It's gonna start very small. This can get as big as you want it with our own conventions, our own events, perhaps a debate community, but it all starts with you. This is exciting. I'm excited and uh, I'll see you all on Patreon. By the negative side for 10 minutes. Uh, Dr. Your... White, if I'm not mistaken, you said that Jesus did not cease to exist even though he's dead, am I right? Yes, of course. Okay, all right. So, even though he's dead, he did not cease to exist. My question is, where was he when he was dead? Well, what did he say to the thief on the cross? He said, today you will be with me in paradise. So, so he was in paradise? Can I finish my answer, please? Okay. Because the Bible says more than just that, all right? Okay. He says, today you will be with me in paradise. So there's a place called paradise. We are also told elsewhere, and we're not sure exactly when during this time period, but Jesus went and made proclamation to the spirits who were in prison who were rebellious in the days of Noah. So there was some declaration of his victory over death that took place during that time period as well. Okay, so you're not sure where was he when he was dead for the I three days? I just gave you a very clear answer. Okay. I don't know why you All come right. up with not See, sure. So when you're dead, you're not really dead, in other words. No, death okay. is not non-existent, sir. Okay. So, when Christ said, "I will be," you will be with me in paradise. Was mm -hmm. Christ already in paradise at that time? Of course not. It's in the future. Okay. Say so it's in the future. Yes, it is. Does he say that after my death I will be there in paradise? He says, "Today you will be with no, me I'm, in paradise." My question is, when he said, "I well, will I can be only with you," what Jesus said. So I, I will be with you in way. paradise. Did he say after the th uh, or when I'm dead I will be in paradise with you? Did he say that? When you're hanging on a cross, you generally are very brief in your statements. Okay, now, sir. Uh, I'll change my questions, and so that's you a good know, idea. You know, okay, here's here's my question again. Okay. Ooh, uh, and this is where we see the heatedness of the exchange starting to affect Dr. White. Look at this. Right there. Look at it. Look at it. Look at this. <laughs> 
His nonverbals and his snarkiness is getting the better of him now. This is not something that is encouraged on the debate stage. And in more formal settings, these would be counts against him. So, so Dr. White needs to be careful here. His goal is to win over the judges who are the audience. I mean, so he has to be very careful to let the combination of his arguments and his winsomeness do the persuading. Here's, here's my question again. Okay. Um, we, we go back to Matthew 24, 36. And I believe since that's, that's one of the verses you have a hard time answering. Okay. So when Jesus said that he does not know the day and the hour of his coming, is that right or wrong? Oh, yeah, obviously, obviously, I believe everything that the Word of God says. Now, you probably <laughs> should go to Mark for this, rather than Matthew, to be perfectly honest with you. Mark 13, 32? You should go to Mark 13, 32. Yeah, so the same thing a, anyway. There is a textual variant in this, Matthew 24. Okay. But, so, but uh, yes, okay. uh, I My question is, Mark 13, 32, so. when he said he does not know the day yes. and the hour of yes. his coming, mm -hmm. is he telling us the truth? Obviously, yes, sir. So he does know not know. I don't even know why you would ask me that question. Well, because the Bible says First John Ooh. three twenty that God knows all things. Yes. Okay. It also says if he's God not knows, a man. The, right? the, if God knows all things, how would you classify Jesus as God? When God, when the Bible says God knows all things. Because I believe the rest of what the Bible says. Now stop. You right. asked me a question. I'm now going to answer it. That's the only one. I'm going to answer your question. Go ahead and make because my Because I don't accept just a part of the Bible. I accept the fact that the very same Bible and the very same author of 1 John 3 says that the word became flesh. I accept all of it. You only accept part of it. That's how I answer your question. Okay. Now, so... When he said, Sweet tangy sriracha, this is getting spicy. Said that he does not know that he and uh, an hour of his coming, that would, would that make him omniscient or knows all things? And no more than his glory was in full display or anything else. There was a limiting of oh, the second person okay. in the incarnation. So that, he made himself nothing, sir. So uh, when he was limited... Which is a reference to Philippians 2, where it says that Jesus emptied himself after not considering equality a thing to be grasped, right? He he emptied himself and took the form of a servant and was born as a man, right? That's part of the discussion here. So good for Dr. White for bringing that up. Follow what you're arguing is. When he, when he was limited here on earth, so he was not really telling the truth, correct? What? Was he telling the truth that he does not know the day and hour of his coming? Yes, because he, he, he used the present tense. Okay, he does not know that. Does not now or did not then? I'm asking you in Mark 13, 32, uh -huh. he said of oh, that day and that hour, right. no one knows, okay? Is he just pretending that he knows but he does not know? No. Oh, okay. The incarnation was real, sir. <laughs> yes, I know. I know what you're talking about. Unfortunately, that answer does not answer my question. Does he know or he does not know? I've already answered this question. You're, you're begging the question. I've, I've told you the answer. Everybody in this room knows what the answer is. As the incarnate one, certain aspects of Jesus' knowledge were veiled. You reject the incarnation, and okay. therefore you say, I'm not answering your question. I just believe all the Bible. I'm sorry. Okay. I cannot reject okay. any portion all of right. the scripture. Let's go back to John 1, 1. See, this is why you should not continue to ask the same questions over and over and over again. It sets up your opponent to do exactly what Dr. White just did, which is make you look foolish. You ask one time, twice, right? But then move on. You know, there, there are lots of areas to work with in terms of Dr. White's contentions and arguments. Ventilacion took his shot, didn't really hit anything, and now he just needs to go somewhere else. You see the Theos, the Theos in the third clause. John 1 1. Of course. Yeah. You know that very well. I John just, 1 1. I would, I would like to. Turn there, sir, and all of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Say, uh, you have the word Theos there in John 1 1. See? <laughs> okay. We back to this now. You said that Jesus is that God in John 1 1. See, correct? If you read my book, sir, I have a rather extensive discussion of the fact that they all. I am is, asking you a simple no, question. No, you're not, Don't sir. Tell no, me you're, to go no, back you're to your not, book. Sir. No, you're not, sir. Please answer my question. Sir, I am a scholar of this language. I will answer it truthfully, and I will not allow you to force me to answer it falsely. I know that you're a scholar, okay? Okay. And I'm, so, I'm very happy. What I said in my book, sir, if you will be truthful with me for just a moment, please be fair here. You want oh these people to understand John 1 1 C, or you just want to make Don't ask me. I'm the one asking you. Okay. okay, John, uh, what I said in my book was that the position of the word theos describes the nature of the logos as deity. That's where I'm going, deity. sir. Okay. That's Mr. What I said Greek scholar, I'm going there on the theos, oh. which you said is a nature. 
Yeah, so this is where I think Dr. White can be critiqued here. It's not necessary to speak the way that he is to ventilacion. And I get it, you're on the stage, and if you hear something particularly frustrating, right, it gets your dander up, and we're human beings, and that's what happens, right? You start riffing and cross, and things tend to stray this way. The problem is, you need to be constantly thinking about the judges, which is your audience. If your goal is to persuade those folks to agree with your position, then all sarcasm, all laughter at your opponent, you know, all superior attitudes, condescending tones, you need to get rid of all of those things and just let the arguments and the refutations speak for themselves. The Jesus nature in John 1, 1, C is God. Am I right? The nature of the, the Logos. Nature, the nature of the Logos. Because the Logos hadn't become okay. flesh yet, sir. Now, now, in John 1, 1, B, you have another word that means God. After is, a preposition. Okay, right. after a preposition. Right. E, okay. All right. Prostantio. Now, is that one God in John 1, 1, B the same as the God in John 1, 1, C? Or different. How, how could you even ask the question if you can no, read the language? No, answer my question. Because pro, I, I will. Okay. Pros ton theon. Pros means in the presence of. So you have a distinction in the language. Whereas the position of theos, there is no preposition here. And therefore, it's describing the nature of I the I will logos. repeat my question, sir. Okay. I, I'm sorry if you can't understand the answer, sir. Oh, thank you. It seems that your question, okay, your answer is very vague. Let's go back. Okay, no, it's slowly, very specific, actually. slowly, slowly, okay? You said John 1, 1, C, there is a God. The nature of Jesus is as being God. I said his nature is deity. So okay, deity being... or God. Okay, now in John 1, 1, B, you have another God. No, I do not. There's only one God, sir. I'm a monotheist. No, so no, John. in John 1, 1, B. I'm having serious deja vu. It, 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 isn't this like verbatim what Ventilacion questioned Dr. White about in the first cross <laughs> examination? Is this like a glitch? Maybe this is like a glitch in the video and we've just jumped back in time. Can someone check on this for me? <laughs> this video might have been directed by Christopher Nolan, you know? <laughs> we may have looped ourselves around and now we're watching this backwards. Ventilacion's arguments have now folded together on itself like a city in Inception. You mean in, you have Tan Theon. Tan the There's uh -huh. God. Okay, right, the, the God. Mm. Or the Pros God. Tan Theon. Pros Tan Theon. The Logos was in the presence of the Father okay, for eternity. All right. Yes. Pros Tan Theon. Mm -hmm. Is the Pros Tan Theon the same as the Theos in the third clause? Of course not. Not. Okay, good. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Can I change my question now? now I wish you would. Uh, that's what I've been looking for. You've been looking for this? this <laughs> what is it? Well, I'll, I'll uh, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, to you. What is yes. happening? <laughs> cheer, cheer. Cheers. <laughs> Ventilacion broke. More good questions for you, Br Dr. White. Brief pause, Mr. Yes, Moderator. Sorry okay. about that. All right. <laughs> because you were, you were trying to accuse us so that we consider Christ as a mere creature. Now, in Philippians 2.9, which, of course, you use in your book, okay, my question there is based on verse 9. Okay? For God has highly exalted him. Can you tell us the meaning of the word exalted? To, well, wait a minute. Uh, to, to, it's used in the Greek Septuagint of exaltation of someone to a high place of honor. Very nice. A very nice question. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus was exalted. Am yes. I right? Yes, by the Father. By the Father. Okay, we've shifted again now. So we're in Philippians 2. Does it say there in Philippians 2, 9, the Father, or says God? Well, given the entire oh, context, okay. given okay. the entire right. context, yes, so, it's very obvious. So there's a God. Did there's you want a... an answer to that, or are you just okay, move, moving along? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here in Philippians 2, 9, there is a God who exalted Jesus Christ. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, so here you have one God. Again, it's important that you keep track of these verses. Philippians 2.9, so it says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Of course, this comes directly after verses 6 through 8, which I already referenced, and that is showing uh, that Jesus was equal to the Father. So <laughs> you got to bear that in mind. <laughs> Who exalts another? Am I right? No. Oh, okay. I thought I thought it's one God exalting another no, because, God. No, because you, you're starting in the middle. And okay. We, and we can all see why you're starting in the middle. If no. you would start at the beginning of the hymn, you would be able to answer all your own questions. I know, I know Philippians 2, 6, 7, 
But I, that's why my question is based on Philly Fence 2 9. All right? Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, you understand it. Okay? Yeah, sure. I mean, when it says well, he was equal with the father. You're I a Greek scholar. You know, you know what you're talking about. Yes. So, okay. Let's, let's go back to that verse 9. It says here, God exalted Jesus Christ. Okay? If Jesus Christ is God, okay? Or the eternal Son of God, is there a need for exaltation? Yes you, or no? You, uh, yes, because of Dia. Because of what? Dia. Since you, since you don't want to read the whole thing, I'll <laughs> no, just no, make no, it no, no, because of Dia. It's my, it's my time to Actually, answer Actually, time's questions. up, All but right. Dia. Thank you very much. Now, when you... <laughs> right. Right, and so it sounds like Dr. White, uh, his answer to why did God exalt Jesus, Dr. White says, because of the word therefore here, right at the very beginning, therefore, that's why, you know? And as many of us have heard in church to the cringe of so many ears, when you see a therefore, you need to ask what it's there for. Come on, guys, somebody can air five me. Um, God the Father exalted Jesus because, verses six through eight, <laughs> you know, you have to read the whole thing in context. Not a great job from uh, Ventilacion. Focusing on one verse or phrase to the exclusion of its particular context is horrible exegesis. And this has been Ventilacion style the entire time. Mr. Ventilacion, in Philippians chapter two, beginning at verse five, it says, have this attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus. What attitude was in reference there? Humbleness. Humility, right? Humility and obedience. What is what is humility? Well, he, he has to follow God until he's dead. That's why he is humble. Ah, uh, this is a setup, okay? So we're still in Philippians chapter 2. I love this. This is a setup. You got to be careful, Ventilacion. So humility is just obedience? Or does verse 4 for, sort of well, help explain this? Uh, well, my, that is Philippians 2, 5. So to answer what kind of humility, he proves humility. When Dr. White gets cooking, he cooks with gas. This is a setup for Philippians 2.4, which references Christ's equality with the Father, right? Since the Bible teaches that God has no equal, yeah, watch this, uh, Isaiah 46.5, to whom will you liken me and make me equal? This is, this is the Lord speaking. And compare me that we may be alike. That's a rhetorical question. The answer is no one. The Bible teaches I am God and there is no other. That's what the Lord is saying. And yet here we have in the New Testament teaching that Jesus Jesus is equal to the Father. So what do you do with this? You know, you affirm the doctrine of the Trinity. That's where all of this leads. So good on Dr. White, because Ventilacion is going to have to give a sufficient exegetical presentation on his understanding of Philippians chapter 2 now. Humility by verse 8, it says that he was humble and obedient to God until his death. So verse, verses 6 and 7 are not part of his uh, being humble? It is a part of Philippians chapter 2. But ask me a question about Philippians 2, 7 down to 8. Uh, no, I actually read it in context. <laughs> so you have to go with verse 6 okay. first. Okay. Um, when it says, who existing in the form of God. Could you explain how Jesus was existing in the form of God? Okay. Give me the mm -hmm. you know, It's on the screen. Okay. No, no, Great no, question. So I'm, I'm asking them my book. Because I have to answer you by the book. When I say, when Christ is in the form of God, Chris Dunn, who read the book, Christology and the Making, said that the word morphe, or form, in the Greek, is a near synonym to the word akon, or image. So Christ is the image, or the form of God, the image of the invisible God, Hebrews chapter 1. Can you tell us what huparkon means? Who existing in the form of God, sir? Huparkon. Yeah. Okay. What does well, it mean? Like, who was existing? When? What? Oh, okay. You said there was a pre-incarnation there in Philippians 2.6. Uh, I don't see something that is talking about pre-incarnation in Philippians 2.6. It is simply say that Christ being in the form of God or in the inmates of God did not try to be equal well, with God. Well, okay. I mean, that's a nice dodge. Actually, it's not a nice dodge. It's, an, it's not even a nice try. From dealing with the exact phrase who existing in the form of God, which seems to show that Jesus existed prior to taking on human form. And prior to human form, look at this with me. I mean, verse six, right? Who though he was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, verse seven, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. He was equal to the Father prior to being born on earth. That's literally what Philippians is saying here. So Ventilacion has not answered the question, and Dr. White really needs to press him on this. So Th that's why that's my rendition of Philippians 2 6. So what you're saying is if a creature does not try to blasphemously try to be equal with God, that's humility. Of course. He did not try to become equal with God. And that's because humility? 
because that is how he proved that he is different from God. He is to prove to God that sure. he is humble by obeying God. That is humility. So it is humility for me not to claim to be God tonight. No, uh, the, 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 the point here is this, okay? Never did he claim to be God. He did not say, he did not even say, I am God. He did sir, not say that. Sir, uh, that okay. okay, all you Bible readers out there, is that what Philippians 2 is teaching? That, uh, verse 3, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Verse 4, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Verse 5, have this mind among yourselves. Don't claim to be God, guys. Is that how that flows? Is that the teaching of this text? Or is it we should be like Jesus in thinking not like he did of his own interest, which entailed equality with God and having the form of God, but we should be like him as he lowered himself from the form of God and became a man to die on the cross for others, for us, that we should have that same style of humility? Not, that's, not, that's not the question. Oh, This is supposed to be an illustration of humility. Uh, that's what I'm Humility saying. is having certain rights and laying them aside to serve others. Well, You're saying he didn't have a right and did not grasp that. I didn't that. say that. So that's a different what, thing, isn't what it? What I'm saying is that his humility, Mr. Uh, Dr. White, is proven through his obedience to God. That even though he is in the form of God, he did not hold on to that quality of being in the form of God, but instead preferred, all right? How did, preferred, he, how did he make himself no reputation, verse 7? Well, it's, it's so easy. Christ, Christ had to remember was given that tremendous power and authority by God. He was given that power. He said, all things were given to me by my father. Matthew eleven twenty seven. But why did he if, have to make himself? If he would hold on, if he would hold on to that, to that authority or that power, Mr. White, or Dr. White, you could not, you could not crucify him on the cross. So when okay? it says he took the form of a servant, when did, he, when did he take the form of a servant? Uh, there you go. I, I was waiting for that. A temporal style question, right? Uh, by the way, Dr. White is killing this. You know, if, if you're wondering, maybe I haven't mentioned this yet, Dr. White has had advantage in this debate the entire time. From the complete missed opportunities by Ventilacion and his cross, uh, to the specific exeget uh, exegetical questions by Dr. White that poke holes in his opponent's arguments, Dr. White is nailing it. The issue here is, Ventilacion wants to flip-flop around in time with this verse. This verse clearly reads that something was going on before Jesus was born in verse 7. There was an emptying going on, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness. This is how it reads in that specific order. And then, of course, equality with God in the form of God even before being born. Ventilacion wants to explain everything going on in this passage by appealing to after Jesus was born, which means that he basically has to ignore verses 6 and 7. And so the appropriate response here must be to zoom in on the time frame of this passage. When are all these things happening and in what order in Philippians? chapter 2, and that's exactly what Dr. White did. Great job. Let's see what the answer is. Galatians 4, 4, it says. So now we're going to uh, chapter 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. But it says he made himself. That's what I mean he pre-existed his birth. I did not say that. I, did, I, did I say he pre-existed? Paul did. Oh, well, that, that, did you did you read a word pre yeah, Yes, yes, it's because it oh, says he, it is only your opinion, sir. Mr. sir what what is what is what is hayatan? What is hayatan? What, kind, what is hayatan? Allah hayatan ekenosan. He emptied himself. Correct. It's a reflexive pronoun, yes. isn't it? Okay. How did yes. Jesus do that if he didn't he exist? He has to empty himself with that being in the form of God. That he has the power and the authority. But you just connected it with his coming in the flesh, sir. That's why I'm. That's the incarnation. That means Jesus preexisted. He had to empty himself, devote himself of the power that he has in order that he could fulfill his mission to die. Because if he will not empty himself with the power that was given to him by God, you cannot crucify him on the cross. Okay, let's. You so according to Ventilacion, guys, Jesus emptied himself in his earthly ministry after he was already born and then was born on earth. I mean, like that... <laughs> 
<laughs> that's how it reads, though. You see? You see how the time frame is completely backwards, uh, according to Ventilacion? He emptied himself of having equal form with the Father, and then was born. That's the consistent reading of the flow of verses 6 through 8. In order to agree with Ventilacion, you have to, like, bend yourself backwards into an exegetical pretzel and go back in time or something. Like, Ventilacion just invented time travel <laughs> in order to exegete this verse. Let's go, let's go to another question here. It's 2 Peter chapter 1. Okay. 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, the phrase, could you could you give us your understanding of the last phrase uh, of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 11? Okay. Specifically, to kuriu heimon kai soteras Jesu Christu, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay. Are you are we going to discuss the Granville Sharp rule here? Well, I'm, I'm asking you for oh, okay. your understanding. Uh, is Jesus... Okay, keep track, guys, with your Bibles open or your apps or whatever, logos. We're now in 2 Peter. Jesus, both Lord and Savior. Okay. I already presented during my presentation, if you still remember, Acts 2.36... God made Jesus as Lord. Acts 5.31, Apostle Peter said, God exalted Jesus to be a Savior. That's the meaning of this verse that you are asking. So, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, go to Acts 2.36, God made Jesus Lord okay, and that, Savior. Thank you, thank you very much. That, that, oh, okay. that, that's not the point. Okay. So, in 2 Peter 1.11, okay. when you have Lord and Savior, they're both referring to one person, right? No. No. Oh, and this one? Yes. It is referring to one person. Okay. All right. So that's verse 11. So up in verse 1, you have the exact same form, the exact same syntax. Okay. And yet, what it's re who is it referring to? Right. So 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. The form of this text matches this one in verse 11. Will be richly provided to you entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what Dr. Dr. White is asking, if Lord and Savior refers to Jesus, why does not God and Savior refer to Jesus? Let's find out what Ventilacion has to say. To the you hemon kaisoteros Jesu Christu. Here it's the exact same word, exact same words, except it's our God and Savior Jesus Oh, okay, Christ. that's why I said, to you, it's just one. To me, it's two. Our God. Grammatically, sir. Grammatically. If, well, if Peter... We, we, do not base, we do not base our doctrine or our teaching in the Church of Christ simply by means of grammar. So because the revelation of God in Scripture, you have something more than that. See, the, the point is, you're trying to impress everybody here that you're a Greek grammar, and you're trying to show to them... I'm not a Greek them, grammar, I assure you that. I mean, Greek, a, a Greek uh, a grammarian. Now, let's just say Greek grammarian. Let's, let's okay. not get into this. Let's answer the question, uh, sir. Okay, all right. The form of the language in 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1 is identical to 1.11. You just admitted that 1.11, both Lord and Savior, refer to Jesus Christ. Okay. Here now, it's God and Savior. That's why I said... Grammatically, from the text, not... Not from the teachings that you've been told by your hierarchy, no, 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 no but problem. from the inspired word of God. Why is it not proper to say our God and Savior Jesus Christ? It is because if you look at verse 11, okay, the God here made Jesus Christ as Lord and made Jesus Christ as Savior. This is Apostle Peter's writing. He came from Acts 236. Peter was the one speaking. So it can't In mean Acts it. In Acts five thirty one, so it can't speaker, mean it, right? Was, huh? So it just can't mean it, even though, even though even though that's what the text actually says. That's why I said you can't. You, it just can't mean that. That's why I'm saying the eleven is different <laughs> from one. This is one. This how's, is eleven. How, wait, 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 wait. How is it? Different? Eleven is different from one. Just so I understand what I'm hearing, so I'm verbally processing. It can refer to the same person in verse eleven, but it can't in verse one because the word God is used for Jesus. So automatically, because the word God is used, it, it discounts. It can't be about Jesus. Is that what he's saying? I mean, is uh, do you guys hear anything different? Uh, that's what I'm hearing. Grammatically. Grammatically, our God. That's one, okay? Tuthe our you, God. Tuthe you him on. And, okay? Christ of Teros. And Jesus, our Savior. So for you to understand this, as 1 Corinthians 2.13 says, you have to compare spiritual things with spiritual. You do not make a theology sir, of one single verse. Sir, sir, you admitted... That in 111, to Kuriu Hemon Kaisoteros, Jesu Christu, is our Lord and Savior. Correct. The same author, 10 verses earlier, uses the exact same words in the exact same forms with okay. one difference. Instead of Kuriu, you have Theu. And now you're telling us 
well, it means it there, and yeah, there's three other times in the same letter he does the you, same you, thing, you can reserve but it doesn't your, mean the same You can thing. reserve your comment later on. Okay, here's my answer. Peter was the one who wrote this book, all right? So he, he said in Acts 2.36, he said in Acts 2.36, God made Jesus as Lord. So he made a mistake here then? He did not make a mistake here. It is your understanding that is mistaken so here. So if I believe both... Okay. <laughs> So, Bam. so if I believe, so if I actually believe what he says here and translate it correctly, and accept what he says in Acts two, I'm doing sola scriptura and toda scriptura. How are you doing the same thing? What I'm doing is I, I'm following First Corinthians two thirteen. You compare spiritual things with spiritual, so you can. Yeah, but that only trades on what you mean by that and your interpretation of what that passage means and how that applies to the rest of the scripture. I mean, like, so that doesn't really answer the question. The verse. A verse in Peter with another verse in Acts in which Peter, Peter said, God made Jesus as a savior. The God, our God. In yeah, but to hop around, right? So to take one verse, right? And then hop over to another verse. This is Frankensteining the Bible. <laughs> you, this has been Dr. White's critique. You cut and splice verses out of their own specific context, interpret each verse outside their own original context, because you're trying to use another verse in another context as a means of interpreting one verse within a different one. It, and then, and then somehow you sew all these pieces together. You create theological Frankenstein. That is the problem. Problem with Ventilacion's theology. Get Isaiah 43.10 on the screen, please. All right. I love I've, that I've verse. outlined, I've outlined uh, in order. Okay. Isaiah, Isaiah 43.10 now, guys. So keep up. You may know and believe and understand. And then could you look at the last three words there and tell me what those are? Yes. Is that what you're asking for? Yes. Yes. Hati ego I me. Huh? Uh, who's speaking in Isaiah 43.10? Well, it's, it's obvious. It's God who is, who is speaking in Isaiah 43.10. So Yahweh is speaking. Yeah, I don't think I've ever read as much scripture in a debate reaction before uh, and shown it on screen, but, you know, that's what YouTube loves, guys. It's for Christians to read the Bible on YouTube. Amen. Isaiah 43.10, this is what it says. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. And, of course, in the original language, there is no he, so we have the name Yahweh here. I am. Just for reference. Now, let's see what happens. There is a tetragrammaton in that... Uh... This is Greek, sir. It's not. It's I know. Not. That's why I said. Oh, hey, uh, there, I don't see a karyus there. Do you, do you have the Do you have the karyus? No, there's not. Oh, well, yeah, okay. there is. Like I kurias hatheos. Says the Lord God. For, it, it's, ya, it's Yahweh. It's Yahweh in Hebrew. Okay. My point is, sir. Why does Yahweh use the phrase ego I me of himself? Well, isn't that a title? Isn't that a name? Ego I me is not the name. It's so a, it's not being used here as a name? That you may not understand am. that, okay. ego I me, I am. I am, see? But he, he didn't say, well, my name is uh, ego I me. That's the difference in Exodus 3.14 when Moses was asked, what is his name? But he said, it, e asher e but, it is just your conclusion based on what okay. you're showing. All right, that except God, that's what Jesus quotes of himself in John 13.19. Oh, that's what, that's what he quoted? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, I am. You want me to want me to show it to everybody so they can see it, say it too? Because okay. that'd be really, really be nice for everybody to see here. Okay. Okay. John 13, 19. Look at it right here. No, I, I already told you. Pistuse te kai suneta hati ego ai me. Okay. There's, oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah, your pardon. We'll get to it. Hold on. You're just, forgiven. Oh, you typed the wrong thing in. No, that's oh. okay. To, to err is human, to uh, forgive is divine. Careful. Okay, I'm forgiving you. Here, here is the NA27, and boy, you're going to, all of you are going, ooh, when you see it, I wonder if you're going to go, ooh, again. Well, John chapter can you 13, repeat? verse 19, that when it comes about, where, oh, what, what's those, what's the, what's the last phrase there? Hati what? Well, I don't see. In order that you I, I, might I, believe, isn't that the same verbal form that's used in Greek substitute right here? Right. Is this, uh, John 13, 19. Uh, oh, John 13, we're yeah. We're talking about John 8, 58 here. No, John 13, 19. Oh, yeah, so oh. the argument from Dr. White is that Jesus is uh, using the same title, actually the same phrase that Yahweh uses to announce himself in Isaiah 43, 10. In John 13, 19, Jesus says the same thing in reference to himself. I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe, and here it is, that I am he. So if Jesus uses the same phrase in reference to himself, he is identifying himself as the Yahweh of the Old Testament. Let's see how Ventilacion responds. Okay, so we have a different context now. Yeah, the, no, okay. con the context is Jesus is prophesying about what's going to happen in the future, just like Isaiah 43.10. So you have the same verb, 
And then you have hati ego aimi. Why would Jesus take the words of the Greek Septuagint that were about Jehovah, Yahweh, no, no, and no, apply that's, them that's to himself? Way, that's not the way I see it there. The I am there, the question there in, Re in John chapter 8. No, it's not is, John is, chapter 8, John chapter 13. Yeah, that's what I said. No, you said John chapter 8. Oh, John chapter 13, okay. I'm still at John 8, 58. <laughs> because, okay. Most of the time, uh, Christ is being questioned uh, if he is the Messiah or not. No, that's okay. not what I'm talking about. Okay. So John no. 13. John 13 is the betrayal of Judas. Right, so in John chapter 13, Jesus has just washed his disciples' feet, and he begins to allude to his own betrayal. He, again, he says, I'm telling you this now so that you may believe that I am he. Just for reference, let's see what happens next. Uh, now I tell her before it comes, now when it does come pass, many believe that I am he. Uh, in, in the King James Version, I am he, what an italicized he. Yeah, hati ego I mean, using the exact same verbal form that's found in the Greek Septuagint. So well, my uh, question for you is, why would Jesus, if everything you've said about him is true, apply Isaiah 43.10 no, to himself? It's just you're thinking that it, well, he was applying Isaiah 43.10. See, in, in this version, which is NLT, I tell you this now, so that it happens you will believe that I am the Messiah. The I am there. Is that, is, can, you, can you show me the word Messiah in the Greek, sir? We're not talking about bad English translations. Oh, okay. Let's stick with the, let's stick with the Greek. Okay. It's barely a paraphrase, folks. If you have to use that, you're not dealing with the New Testament. Oh, uh, okay. Ooh, wow. You're not. Uh, you don't have to talk to the audience this way, Dr. White. You know what I mean? The question about where the word Messiah is in the Greek, that was all you needed to do. It's not necessary. Oh, time's up. Saved by the bell. Yeah, all right. Uh, wow. Yeah, what a debate. Um, Ventilacion, he's got some pipes. Uh, the the hot mics were blowing my eardrums out there. Uh, <laughs> I wondered if after that debate, his voice just gave out with all that yelling. Look, do I really need to explain who won here? I mean, Ventilacion missed so many opportunities to challenge Dr. White's main contentions and arguments. He did do that to a point, but he focused on like so much time on what John 1-1 was really saying and then missed all these other opportunities to force Dr. White to exegete the text in places that he opposed Dr. White. But as you can see, there's a reason why Christianity is Trinitarian in its Orthodox doctrine. It's because, I mean, you can try to suggest that the Bible teaches Unitarianism or, or some form of anti-Trinitarianism, but you have to do so by ignoring the clear context of Scripture. We did not arrive at Trinitarianism yesterday, ladies and gentlemen. There's a reason why Christians hold to this position, and Ventilacion could not overcome Dr. White's arguments and refutation. As a matter of fact, when Dr. White got up to cross-examine Ventilacion, it was low-key a bloodbath. Why? Because White asked specific exegetical questions of passages like John 13, Hebrews chapter 1, John 12, 12, John 17, John 1, right? Isaiah, uh, and every time, Ventilacion could not provide a sufficient answer that traded on proper exegesis of the scripture. Dr. White won by a mile, in my opinion. However, I would say Dr. White in certain moments lost his cool to Ventilacion and said things and spoke in a manner that was very unhelpful. We should not, as good debaters, appear condescending. We should not laugh at our opponents. We should not roll our eyes at the audience. We should not talk to the audience in a condescending fashion. This does nothing to help make your case. As a matter of fact, it hurts your case in more formal settings. But having acknowledged that, I mean, that did nothing to stop White from winning this uh, debate by a mile. Okay, now it's your turn. What did you think? Who won in this debate, Joe Ventilacion or James White? And why? Let me know all of those things in the comments below. I'd love to get your thoughts on that. As always, I've got more videos for you coming up. and. Uh, Hey, I'm about to jump over to a live stream with my Patreon supporters, and we're going to discuss this video. I'm going to take their questions live. Why don't you join me over there, and I'll see you all real soon.